Hey everyone, it's Zach back. You might have recently heard of the Metaverse, whether it was Facebook's announcement to change their name to Meta, or you might have heard someone say it's gonna overtake the internet, or you might have been someone who plays right now on Minecraft, Roblox, or you're interested in NFTs. Whatever it is, the Metaverse is something that is becoming more relevant in our society, and it's difficult to explain fully because it doesn't necessarily exist at this present moment. However, large corporations are pouring a lot of money and resources into it, believing that it is the future of our virtual lives. So what I wanna do in this video is bring Break down in detail what is going on with the metaverse, how it's going to impact you and myself directly, but more importantly, how you and I could find ourselves actually investing into this to hopefully make some money based off of what this transition could mean for our economy as a whole. So let's take our time, dive in the details, and jump into it right now. All right, so let's start by defining what the metaverse is. The metaverse is an expansive network of persistent, real-time rendered 3D worlds and simulations that support continuity of identity, objects, history, payments, and entitlements, and can be experienced synchronously by an effectively unlimited number of users, each with an individual sense of presence. All right, so that's a pretty heady definition. Let's look at Facebook's definition to see if it actually makes a bit more sense. Here's what Facebook says. They say that the metaverse is a set of virtual spaces where you can create and explore with other people who aren't in the same physical space as you. Now, these are broad definitions of the metaverse as a whole, but hopefully it's something that can get you and I to understand a bit more about it. That is because if anything over the course of the pandemic we've learned is that we do live more virtual lives. Think about all the Zoom meetings you might have encountered. Think about how we're now doing all of our virtual streaming at home instead of going to movie theaters. We have more of a digital footprint now than maybe even a physical footprint. You might even interact with more of your friends through Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or Twitter, as opposed to actually seeing them face to face. So with these large corporations such as Facebook, Facebook, Microsoft, and others are seeing is that that is the direction we might be heading in from our virtual lives, whether it's how we interact on a social perspective or it's actually how we work because now we're seeing more employers offering remote work opportunities where you don't even have to go into the office anymore. You might be asking yourself, well, does the metaverse already exist? Now, there is some truth that certain elements of it might already exist, but there's more to come later. Think about certain features you might have heard so far that a lot of kids play, such as like Roblox and Minecraft. Those are basically universes where they go in, they build, create, and do all sorts of things, make, in purchase, make purchases inside of the actual virtual reality experience, and that is basically a very lucrative area right now. And that could be what we see happening on a more macro scale for all of our lives. Now, Mark Zuckerberg believes it could take about five to 10 years for the metaverse to fully realize itself based off of the certain investments that might be needed, such as the infrastructure bill that was recently passed by Congress, where they're actually going to put more money into fast broadband internet, which gives more access to the entire country as a whole, which could impact the metaverse directly. Furthermore, there are other elements of this as well that people might need, like virtual reality headsets and all those kinds of things. Now, I'm not someone who uses this type of technology myself. I do not own a VR headset. I do not play Minecraft or Roblox or anything to that extent. But what I'm going to tell you next is I think the more interesting aspect of this, you you might be interested in actually going and in involving yourself in that and we might be forced to and specifically depending upon our work that we have but I'm thinking from an investment perspective there are some opportunities that could exist and here's what I want to talk to you about now before you put your VR headset on and get lost in the metaverse please tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm that'll help the channel out a lot push this video to other people and it would mean a lot to myself personally as well Now, if we take a step back and think about all the things that have been going on over the last year and a half due to the pandemic and also with some of the rapid changes in our economy, we could see some of these things that we've been aware of now actually taking place directly in the metaverse itself. First would be, how do you actually utilize money in the metaverse? And one of those things we might see going in that direction would be through cryptocurrency. Think about Bitcoin or Ethereum or other specified cryptocurrency that you might use on a specific VR or something like that. Now, that is not to me advocating that you need to invest in cryptocurrency at all. I personally believe that finances in our own currency is probably best at the end of the day because that is solid and secure and is not as volatile. But I could see us moving in a direction where cryptocurrency basically becomes the money within a metaverse. And that is why you heard earlier where Facebook even tried to create their own version of cryptocurrency, ran into a whole host of issues associated with that. But you could think that that might be the direction that we're heading in. You might have also heard of NFTs or non-fungible tokens. I made a video about that not too long ago. Feel free to check it out because I think that would be very helpful for you to understand what they are as a whole. 
but basically what you see with NFTs are basically going to be the products that we have within a metaverse. You could think of like a virtual asset, like a virtual painting. You might even think about someone wearing like Nikes in the virtual universe or in the metaverse. Nike has actually invested money into having NFTs in this type of space. So once again, a large corporation heading in that direction. Once again, that's fascinating. So I believe NFTs are basically going to be the way in which we show to the world or to the virtual metaverse the things that we own, the things that we like, all that stuff that you and I do physically, then we'd be bringing to this virtual reality as well. Now, I'm not saying this is a good or a bad thing, but that is the direction I see things heading in. So if you see cryptocurrencies being basically the money, the NFTs basically being the way in which we have the products in that area, then you can look at how this actually starts to shape up from an investment perspective. I'm not here to necessarily recommend that you invest in a cryptocurrency or buy NFTs, but I can tell you what I personally do. As I always mention in this channel, I talk extensively about investing in index funds because of their proven track record, their stability, and what I find the most comfort and peace in. But I've also allocated about 5% of my portfolio into cryptocurrencies. And even on a deeper level within that, I've invested into OMI, which basically is a framework that could be used for the metaverse in the future, the VVverse, where you can actually go and buy and sell NFTs. So that is the particular aspect I've headed in. I'm not saying that you and I should do the same thing because there might be other opportunities and advantages elsewhere. But generally speaking, we're going to see things heading in this direction. If all these large corporations are moving there and they believe that is the trend line, I would see us kind of continue to follow, not necessarily saying it's a good or a bad thing, but it's something for us to be aware of. And just think about your own life right now and how digital your life is. It's not really a fantasy for us to consider that the metaverse or something like that becomes reality. And I think we might miss the point where we're just thinking about being this kind of weird dynamic where you and I are attending kind of this like goofy staff meeting where we have our avatars there and that kind of stuff. I mean, that could very well be it, but that isn't going to be the whole picture. So I think for you and I to just take a step back and look at this more from an analytical perspective and not from a perspective of being judgmental or dismissive of this, but try to understand it as best as we possibly can as I'm continuously trying to do as I'm sharing this with you. Hopefully it allows us to actually make wise decisions related to this as well. Now, when you think about it a little bit, the metaverse already exists to a limited extent. Right now, I'm making a video for you on YouTube. You and I are not in the same physical place right now, but I am sitting down talking to a camera that's hopefully going to reach you where you're going to actually make decisions that could impact your life positively. That is the intention that I have. This is a fully virtual experience that we are having, very similar to what you might encounter if we went into something like the metaverse. Once again, not saying that's the direction I want things to go in, that is the way they are heading in, but for the most part, that is where our lives are right now. They are very virtual. We do most of our work on our phones and our computers, very limited interaction on a personal physical level, especially due to the pandemic. But now what we can consider is that if that is the trend line, if that is where things are going, we can prepare accordingly and kind of adapt our expectations of how we should be navigating as well. Now that we understand kind of the broad principles associated with the metaverse and how it could be coming to you and I very soon, we can make the wise decisions for ourselves from a financial perspective, looking at our investments. But also what I want to do right now is just take a moment and talk a little bit about kind of the spiritual, psychological, and emotional elements associated with this. Now, I think it is very disheartening that over the course of the pandemic, we became more socially isolated and that just exacerbated a problem that we already had moving forward, where we spent so much time scrolling online, looking at our curated versions of our ourselves on Instagram or in other areas and basically not being able to relate one-to-one -one with other individuals. This heading in the direction of a metaverse could continuously exacerbate that even further and make things worse, but it could also make it better depending upon how you and I navigate. What I want to encourage you and myself to do is that if you at least stay engaged with other people, depending upon whether you're more extroverted or introverted, having human relationships is a very important thing in our life and in our society and it can bring a lot of value and meaning into your life as well. So my encouragement is that as we head in this direction as an economy, as we see our virtual lives continuously mold and change and morph, what you and I can always do is we can remain positive in our outlook on trying to be a positive influence in this society and in this world by making sure that we view people with the respect and dignity they deserve and hopefully enjoying the opportunities to engage with one another, to have friendships, develop relationships that are meaningful, that really bring value to our lives as a whole. So that's just my encouragement to you that if you find yourself going in this direction, don't let it lead you towards isolation. Hopefully it could lead you to more friendship, but also take a step back, get outside, go and actually meet with people in person as well, because it's important to have that type of balance and moderation in our lives.
With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, do any research on your behalf so we can make well and wise informed decisions moving forward. Furthermore, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create positive content that makes positive impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you next time.